I'm going to try to do some videos on uh, some of the most frequently asked questions I get and uh, this is what I'm going to do about inverters and um, if you haven't seen my system I do have videos on it some of them suck, some of them are right uh, this is both a 12 and 24 volt system uh, 1200 watts of solar on the 24 volt and uh, that's grid tied and then uh, 300 watts on the uh, 12 volt so uh, I want to just go into the different kinds of inverters and um, and let you know what I think about them and uh, how they work so uh, we'll go from there alright so the first type of inverter is just going to be a straight inverter it's going to be DC in and AC out uh, just your batteries voltage in and uh, your household current out next one will be what's called a uh, pass-through inverter which means uh, you have DC in and AC out and then if you plug it into the wall or plug it into the grid it will uh, switch off of the batteries and, uh, and pass right through the inverter and it won't be using or cycling your batteries next type you have would be a uh, inverter charger which will uh, maintain your batteries for you and if the power goes out it will uh, switch over to uh, battery and um, they're a little bit more difficult to use on solar and I'll try to go into that and the next type would be a uh, grid tie hybrid inverter which means it's uh, battery backup uh, all excess solar goes into the grid and uh, if the power goes out it automatically switches to batteries and runs off the solar when the power comes back on whatever deficiency there is in the batteries it will uh, charge them right back up and this one here is actually a uh, grid tied uh, hybrid generator backup uh, you just I'll, I'll have to do a video on that or, or you just have to look at my other videos and another difference in inverters is uh, whether they are transformer type which that one is this one is and these two are solid state uh, the transformer type inverters like this Outback or this Voyager by Trace uh, they're meant for continuous duty I'm not saying that a, tra or a uh, solid state inverter wouldn't do that but uh, these are definitely made for continuous duty um, the other difference is or the other difference to talk about would be pure sine wave versus modified sine wave all of these are modified sine wave inverters except for that one that's a pure sine wave inverter the biggest difference with uh, modified sine wave versus pure sine wave is uh, things like refrigerators and and some of your appliances are going to run hot and some things won't run at all some of your variable speed drills and uh, some of your charges for your drills won't run at all uh, your fans are going to buzz your clocks are going to run fast um, it's not something to steer away from. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't go try to save a bunch of money by buying a cheap uh, pure sine wave inverter, you know, versus a uh, a really good transformer type uh, modified sine wave inverter. So sometimes it's just not worth it. So this is a good example of how you'd be able to use your uh, inverter charger for, uh, you know, your household applications. You would just have your uh, your your regular power in goes out of the inverter through a sub panel and uh, run your designated loads whatever you could you know your inverter would be designed to run or, or have enough capacity to run then you have your battery bank and remember this end here can always be switched over to a generator if you have a quality generator you can plug it in and it's going to go ahead and charge your batteries back up and you'd be able to just shut your generator off uh, you'd add solar here obviously where you just feed your batteries and that's the only thing that would be difficult to do with one of these inverters is uh, you'd have to change the charging parameters so that you'd be able to use your solar to keep your batteries topped off. One of the biggest misconceptions that people have is just how much things draw off their batteries. Um, so I did this mock-up just for you guys. I got my amp clamp here, so we'll be measuring the uh, DC draw and charge. I got a little amp or a watt meter here, and we'll be showing that. Right now we're running this light bulb. This, this inverter here actually uh, passed the current right through it without it being turned on at all. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And it's probably going to charge the batteries just for a minute. It's only charging them at, uh, there it goes, going way up there. 50 amps, but it's going to come way down because the solar took care of that. You can see it's already dropping down. So uh, 
I'll just do this uh, do this mock up for you and then show you uh, what kind of draws we get on 12 volt systems anyway. Alright, so we're drawing 0 amps and we're uh, using 0 watts. So let's, uh, let's abuse this system a little bit and show you some of the misconceptions. We're going to pull 1000 watts AC off of it. See we're at uh, 1250. It's going to come on down as it heats up. And right now, off the battery bank, we're pulling 112 amps, which is pretty substantial. And it's showing it pulling it down into the minimum on the voltages. But a lot of that's due to the, uh, the cables are too small. This little mock up I made, and I'm sure actually they are, they're starting to get warm already. So, uh, battery cables, it's a big deal. This also shows that uh, running heat and things like that is just uh, not really an option unless you got a huge system. All right, I ran this thing for about five minutes, and this is a pretty big battery bank. I'll show it to you in a second when we talk about voltages. But uh, let me turn this heater off, and you're going to see the voltages rebound pretty quick. If it gets anywhere near 12.6 or you know somewhere in there, it tells me that I'm still relatively full. So, uh, and then the next thing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug it back in. And what it's going to do, it's going to wait for a minute, and uh, then it's going to charge the battery bank back up. And uh, I'll come back on when it So now it's charging at 70 amps, which is fairly substantial. Of course, it's going to take a lot longer to charge it up than it did to discharge it. Uh, rule of thumb, uh, you got to put in 30% more than you took out. So, uh, inverter chargers are cool. Um, I do like the idea of having a, a pass-through inverter paired up with uh, just a regular old charger. Let me open this thing up for you and I'll, uh, this can be like one of the most common inverters that you can find on the used market. And I'll try to explain to you how to uh, use it on solar. Um, the only way to really utilize your solar would be able to adjust your charge parameters and adjust them down to where your solar panels would have something to do. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to try to run purely off-grid or uh, or just have your solar panels doing nothing until uh, it switches over. And um, That's a big transformer. That's what a transformer inverter looks like. And uh, one of the waste towns are crazy heavy. That's why they got like basically handles on them. Pick them up break your back. So I hope that answered some questions on inverters and things like that and uh, maybe some of the misconceptions on uh, you know just how much amperage AC stuff will draw off of uh, DC. I guess the best way to do it is to try to keep everything in watts. Uh, I'm going to try to do a battery video next where I'll go into uh, batteries and we'll even convert uh, the amp hours of batteries into watts. It's very simple. You just uh, Take the amp hours of the battery and, and multiply it by the voltage, which would be, you know, times 12.6. And um, also to answer a question, you know, most people want to try to, you know, get their 12 volt inverters because they're a lot cheaper. And, and there's a big misconception on uh, your higher voltage inverters being more efficient. It's uh, simply not true. Um, the big downfall would be cable size. That's the only difference. You have to run huge cables. These batteries look miniature, but I mean, they're the size of your car battery. There's uh, 12 of them under here. They're AGMs. And like I said, I'll go into a battery video. But uh, on this one, I was just trying to focus on inverters and uh, the different types. And I think one of them that I missed would be a, a pure grid tie inverter, which is uh, just grid tie. And uh, if you got that tagged into a bunch of solar and wind and all that, got to remember, if you run in a system like that, if your power goes out, you're out. doesn't matter how much you have on the roof. So uh, you guys have a great night, and uh, we'll see you next time.